my team turn. Take me out on the water. We eat fishy. Way out in the woods. Where the breathing is easy, the living is good. Out in the great outdoors. Welcome to Larry Smith Outdoors. We're sponsored by the Badger Sportsman Magazine, Bartline Barrels, Warrior Boats, Lynch of McGuanago, Big Snow Resort, Hard and Soft Fishing, Suzuki, Wings Over Wisconsin, Dick Smith's Bait and Tackle, Kamik Law Firm, Kamalon Measuring Tools, Vexlar, Deep Freeze, Cold Snap, Norm's Egg, and Jiffy. And remember, it's a great day to be alive. Holy moly. Cody, what do you got there? What do you oh, it's food. You can't have any. What do you mean? I'm protecting you. That's why I have the firearm. No, right? it's mine. Oh. I'll tell you what. These kids nowadays, they don't make them like they used to. And they're crabby in the morning. That's the other part I don't understand. How can you be crabby on such a beautiful day like today? Good morning and welcome to Larry Smith Outdoors. Hey, this morning what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some goose hunting and hopefully maybe a few ducks will come into the field. We're hunting over some cut corn. Hey, we're hunting with our good buddy Shotgun Schaefer and his friend Mark and of course Cody. And I can't believe Cody you're up this early this morning. He's a little cranky this morning so you kind of got to bear with him a little bit. But hey, you guys tell us what are we doing here this morning? We're hunting, uh, the farmer just cut silage. There's corn laying all over the field. And uh, we got a northwest wind, and our field is set up north to south. So I'm kind of, I got some decoys set up to the left. I got them out farther, and I got my decoys set up closer. We got a pocket of about 40 yards in between. Okay. So I'm gonna put my decoys closer to the corn, the other decoys out a little farther. So when they come in on a crosswind, you want yours closer to suck them in to get in the middle of that pocket. So then we're standing in full of corn that hasn't been cut yet, and we're gonna shoot them when they come in. You know, Steve. You know, I'm not, I, and I admit it, I'm not that good at setting up decoys and I've hunted with you before and it's amazing how much of a difference it makes to have the right pattern yep. when you set your decoys up. And boy, I'll tell yep. you, when it comes to fishing, comes to hunting, you are always learning. Yep. And you were saying yesterday with the, the drizzle and the rain that we're getting here, that it's real key to wipe the decoys off oh, yeah. themselves too, huh? Why I, is that? I switched a couple years ago. I used to have uh, flocked heads, but the plastic bodies, yeah. the moisture gets on them. The geese come over the top. They, you guys think they're stupid. They live in parks, but they see that and they see that glare of that body. Right. They're out So I carry towels. I used to carry torch when I went to Canada. We'd warm them up, wipe them mm -hmm. down. I just buy fully flocked now. So now when they come in, they see the decoys. They don't see the flare or the shine of the decoys and they come into our decoys better. It's just things I learned. I mean, I, I'll ask you for fishing, but come to this stuff, right. this is what I live for. I live for goose hunting and duck hunting every day now. This is my time of year. You yep. know, and the, the big thing too is in Wisconsin here, you know, years ago, Steve, and you know this, as a kid, you never saw a goose all summer long. Nope. They just, I mean, now we've got all these geese yep. that are staying here, yep. and it's really kind of an overpopulation yep. of them. So, I mean, it's a big thing to try to harvest some of these birds and keep the numbers down. So, and they're pretty darn good eating, yeah, I, especially I, the way you cook I them. got them out here today for a snack. But yeah, I used to be, I used to get a tag, one tag for hork on. You go out there and That's shoot what we one got tag, too. and that was it. Now they're, now from September 1st to the 15th, they're letting you shoot five a day. Yep. Then after that, because they know the migrators are coming down a little bit. Max, don't to, eat that food. They're back to two a day. <laughs> right. So yeah, we'll show you how we set these decoys up. I got little stakes, they're all flocked, they turn, they whip it. You want the wind to make them move a little bit, pivot, and hopefully they'll come in. And okay. what's, hey, what's that other decoy that we used the oh, other day? The what do you waver. call it? Wing the, waver. The wing waver. It's called the general. It's, it's, it's scary how good it works when you flop them wings a couple of times we'll show you on camera we'll flop them and it just brings them geese in hey and if there's anybody out there that has one of these and that wants to get rid of it <laughs> we're looking for another one oh, yeah. so just so you, well, later on when we show it make sure that if anybody's got one in their in their garage or in their basement and they want to get rid of max stay away from that food <laughs> make sure you give us a call hey stay tuned let's see what happens this morning here on larry smith outdoors doing a little bit of goose duck and goose hunting The 
warrior story continues with the best tracking, driest ride in the industry. Designed with a high degree of dead rise and bow flare to push water out and down for a smooth, dry, comfortable ride. The smart trolling keel limits bow drift for enhanced boat control in the wind and with a lifetime haul warranty, Warrior Boats are built to last. Warrior Boats, a legend reborn. Badger Sportsman Magazine, Wisconsin's premier outdoor magazine. Fishing and hunting in Wisconsin, written by outdoor enthusiasts from Wisconsin. Each issue features timely fishing and hunting articles from experts across the state. Badger Sportsman Magazine will help you make the most out of your time in the woods or on the water. Subscribe to Badger Sportsman Magazine today. Galen's has been catching multi-species fish for over 30 years. From our crappy grubs, to our seismic series of hybrid swim baits and grubs, to our jerk minnows. You can't see that jerk minnow, can you? Oh, to our garlic and salt impregnated wacko worm. Oh, that's a Kalen's wacko. Our premium line of Kalen jig heads. Oh, and our original Kalen's grub still does a pretty good job, too. Fish, look at that Kalen's in her mouth right there. Wings Over Wisconsin, a nonprofit organization dedicated to natural resource restoration, preservation, and education with youth and community involvement. Through cooperation with private landowners, state and federal agencies, Wings Over Wisconsin has been a leader in the preservation of our natural wildlife habitat with donated dollars staying in Wisconsin for Wisconsin. For information about how you can join this great organization or how to start a new chapter, please visit wingsoverwisconsin.org. Hey Larry, yeah. I remember man, I told you last time we were out, this is called the looker, it's usually the mom or dad in the family. Yeah, that's interesting, Steve, okay. I yep. always want, I was taught a long time ago, people, you always want the mom or dad, their hind end to the wind, because the birds have to fly into the wind. Yep. So I put the, the looker with its back to the wind and all the feeders, the uh, juvies in front of feeding. So that's the way I was taught, and it seems to work. I mean, I've killed a few geese, so. Yeah, you have. You know, and that's a funny thing. When you ever watch geese in there, uh, anywhere, even in a park or out in a field, there's always, a certain percentage of them are always not feeding and they're always watching. They're, yeah. they're actually a pretty smart bird if, yeah. as far as I'm Feel concerned. Feel that fabric on there, that way yeah. there's no moisture on there. Okay, now if they were plastic. It would shine instantly. It would. And inside here, if you can see that, there's a hole in there. Yep. This stake goes in there, so you always take that pin, put it against the wind. Against so, the wind, So this okay. sits in here. There's also a locking pin if you want to lock them, but I always make them float around. Right. So that sits in there and there's a groove that that pin rotates back and forth, so it allows the, the birds to move to back move and forth, make them look and more lifelike. It a little bit like yeah. they're feeding, so. You know what's amazing, Steve, as a kid growing up, I still have a bunch of my decoys, oh. older ones, and you wouldn't even think about using them decoys. They just, they just don't yeah. work, yeah. you know? I mean, these birds are so used to, to seeing decoys, yeah. and now with the, these new decoys, they look so lifelike. I mean, it's just the way to go. Yeah, rule of thumb is when I'm hunting, when I'm hunting with kids and everybody, if they're flying over and you can see the white of their cheeks, yep. they're coming over, they're low enough to kill. Oh, that's how you that's judge how, it, because you know, kill. a lot of people have a problem with that depth yep. of perception, you yeah. know? So and that's a good, that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, because huh? a lot of times they don't always land. I mean, they can come over, you can see the white of their cheeks, you know they're within 25 yards. If you can see the whites, Shoot them. Take them, huh? And they fly a lot faster than you think they are. Like when they're coming sideways on you, I lead them by six, eight feet. Holy and when you're, when you're hunting waterfall, you pull up on get your gun ready, hit their chest, go up to their head, and don't stop. Keep swinging it past their head and pull the trigger. And pull, you're saying on a, on a day like today with a light wind like that, you're leading them at five to six feet. Easy, easy. If they're Holy flying, cats. Oh yeah. yep. You know, it's hard to really, you know, but if you think about it, how long it takes for that shot to get yep. out to that point when that bird is moving that fast. Yeah, we only have, what is it? I think these shells, these steel shots, like 50, 60 yards. Then after that, they just drop right out of the sky. It's made so that way the lead, we used to use lead, it would right. carry for 100 yards. Yep. Now you can hunt in spots where the shot only goes off 50, 60 yards, and it just drops. As soon as it gets past its zone, it just falls out of the sky. Hey, Steve, you know what? When I go to Fleet Farm or go to, you know, go up to Midwest Shooter Supply and I'm looking for shotgun shells and of course, you know, waterfall, it's all steel shot. There's so many different brands and types and speeds. When you're hunting geese, ducks and geese in a field situation like this, 
what do you think the best shot is? Do you use two shot, BB, T's, uh, you know, fours? Yeah. I mean, three inch, three and a half inch, two and three quarter. What do you use? Today I'm using Winchester Experts. They're 1,550 feet per second. That's okay. what the FPS says on it. Yep. It's 12 shot, number three inch, uh, one and a half ounce. That's the shot in there, and it's BB. I mean, there's no fat on them. Right now, the, the geese come in here. No, now, this is an interesting thing I never thought about. You talked about this when I hunted with you a couple weeks ago. I never thought about that early in the season like this. The birds don't have any fat yeah. on them, or later in the season, sometimes I mean, them birds are 20 yards and you're putting a putting a herd on them and they just yeah. keep going and keep going. Yeah. So, yeah. I've cleaned them already where you, where you clean them and underneath the skin, there's BBs. They didn't go through the fat and never hit the meat. Wow. And that's how much fat, when they come from Canada, come down. When yep. when, that's how you know it's going to be a bad winter. If the fat is that bad on them, we're going to be a cold winter. Like right now, there's no fat on them. Okay. So I'm just using BBs. Sometimes if we can hunt close, where we get the birds in close, I use twos and fours, three inch twos and fours. Right. That's enough to knock them out of the sky. But today we're using BBs and they make triple Bs. They make three and a half inch. And with three and a half inch, boy, you can reach out and touch something. And right. it hurts when you shoot. So. so are you telling me I hope you're not saying this to me. I'm trusting you today. You're not, well, you're not telling me we're going to have a warm winter. Uh, I sure hope you're not saying that. I don't know. That. Right now. Because I'm an ice fishing I machine, know. and last year I got cut short big time. <laughs> this is the new hot item, man. The guys at work are nailing me for this. It's uh, my venison meatball. I made these ones Italian inside. Yeah. Put a strip of onion around, Fidelity onion, and wrapped in bacon. So that's how you get away with sleeping in uh, your machine yeah, because yeah, you're yeah. feeding the boss and stuff? Yeah, just because I'm an operator and stuff. And... Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Oh, Mark, Cody, you don't want any of these things. No, I'll leave them all for mm. you, Larry. I already Check have... out the inside of that, guys. Wow. When it comes to migration of birds, you know, we go out to North Dakota all the time, and I'll tell you something, the last three, four years, we always go the last week of October, we've been missing the migration, and it seems that we've been missing it by two or three days. And you were telling me a little bit about how uh, actually a duck and a, how geese, how when they migrate, and how far they travel, and then they rest up for a certain time frame. Yeah, the guy with that uh, ultralight was following them one time. They did a show on National Geographic, yep. Cody and I were watching, and they were doing, the geese would feed for five or six days, seven days, even ducks, same thing, they'd get it and they'd fly and they'd go about three to 500 miles, they'd stop. And then when they'd stop, they'd feed for five to six, four to five, six, seven days to fatten themselves back up again. And then they'd take off and fly again. Right. So go from Canada to uh, Texas, where they always go, is what, 3,000, 2,500 yep. miles? So you figure they gotta stop at least five times if you do the math, you know, drop and feed. Right. So they have to fatten back up, and that's why they got to fatten for their migration, to the travel like that. So that's what I was told. So if you see birds land, we got also you see migrators coming. It's like okay, you got at least a week to hunt them. Four, wow, four to week, four days to a week. So. I'm glad I'm not traveling with them birds. I'll no. tell you what, because I'd be stopping about every yeah. ten miles. Yeah, You're right. Ready to go. Hey, Shay. Yeah. Is there an app for the geese? So you know, uh, know when they're coming check, off the lakes? I'm checking Mother Nature to see what's going on. Right. Patrick, what are you doing out here? Mark, I'm going fishing this weekend, but with this massive selection of trucks, I can't figure out which one to take. The brand new Lynch Paguanago stores have a massive selection of brand new Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram trucks, cars, vans, and SUVs. Make your next stop at the all new state of the art Lynch Paguanago dealerships today. Nobody sells for less than Lynch. From the equipment we use to the clothing we wear, the developments of modern ice fishing technology only serves to make the time we spend on the ice with our friends and family more enjoyable. And there's one product that has stood the test of time for over 30 years. And that's Vexilaw, the most trusted name in sonar. Three generations of ice anglers have been using Vexilar technology, and Vexilar continues to earn the respect of anglers all across the ice belt. Time to create your own memories. Visit Vexilar.com. At Jiffy, we pride ourselves at being number one in developing the best propane drills on the ice. It's why our engineers have worked side by side with anglers for 65 years running. All built and tested right here in the U.S. of A. Patented proven performance is Jiffy's vision for the future. And from where we stand, the future looks 
pretty darn sweet. Jiffy, we put the world on ice. The new Beaver Dam Titanium Tip Stick is the first ice rod with a built-in extendable titanium spring bobber, making it the most versatile ice rod ever. Extend the bobber for ultralight panfish jigging or retract it for game fish or when it's time for travel. It even has a built-in rattling handle to attract fish. It took a while to come up with an ice rod worthy of the Beaver Dam name, but when we did, boy, we nailed it. Decoys do, guys, right there, like right in the decoys. That is absolutely crazy. See, when they're up above you, and when you're calling them, it echoes. You'll hear it. Like if you're over there where my truck is, you'll hear an echo, and a bird doesn't echo when it talks, when it honks at you. So if they're coming from my right shoulder, I turn to my left <laughs> and cluck at them to bring them in. And then when I let them go by, when they get over my decoys, I let them go by. I taught this from my cousin, he's a pretty good caller. You let them go by, get about 100 yards away from it, then you turn yourself the other way and you throw out the hail call, and that's like, where are you guys going call? <laughs> and instantly, if you saw when we were filming before, hurry up, Cody, here they come. Beat her down, guys, get ready. They're ready, they're ready. Pick them, pick them, pick them. Good boy, right nice there, buddy. job, that was cool. Here, hey, I'll tell you what. That was the first nice flock that came in. We let a couple other bird singles come by, but we were we seen that big flock coming from the back there. So we let the singles go by. And I'll tell you, that flock, there was about a dozen birds in there, boy, and that was some fun shooting right there. That was absolutely awesome. It's well worth, Dan, getting up at 3.30 in the morning. Hey, Dan, we're gonna be home in time to go to church today. Excellent. I told you we were going to make it to church today. That's awesome. And that was almost a free dog. Some guy gave it to me for a sandwich. What a sandwich? Yeah, I made him a goose sandwich. He gave me. Are you kidding me? That's how good I. That shot huh? you. I got a dog. You got a goose sandwich? <laughs> I got three dogs. You hunt a lot of different farms, and I'll tell you, you know, over the years, it's amazing the amount of farmers that don't want hunters on their land and yep. a lot of it's simply a simple thing of not picking up their yep. stuff that yep. they bring in it's no different than fishing too yep. is that you years ago you could pretty much hunt anywhere and fish anywhere people would let you on your land but it's a whole different deal now what do you do different so when you come on well, with the guys i hunt with i take out even if i buy myself or whatever when we're done we make sure we stay in one area we pick up all the hosels see where we got the empties which are all the up. empties yep make yep. sure that's all picked pick up pick them up Whatever you do, whatever you do, you know, around your soda cans or pick everything up. And when you're done, always stop by the farmer's house and say thank you. Like when I get my geese done prepped with sausage, I stop by their house and or drop off beer, all that stuff. Just to make them happy because uh, there's not too many farmers that let us hunt anymore. Right. And if you get a farmer that's mad, he's not going to let you hunt. And then guess what? We he's going to ruin it for everybody yep. too. So yep. that's, that is a huge thing. Simply comes down to this, Steve. Having respect for the landowner's property. Yep. Pretty Shake, simple. Shaking their hand when you're done. Seriously, a handshake right. goes a long ways. And like you say, you make them mad, we're not coming back. And I like hunting. This is, my, this is what I live for. That's right. why my nickname's the Shotgun Chef. So. Right. And you know, <laughs> realistically, the farmers are happy that you hunt yeah. these birds and, yep. and, and, and harvest them yeah. because of the damage they do. Yeah, they tear year. up everything they got. So yeah, we make them happy. And like I say, go over and say hi. Like I say, this guy here we're hunting, I, he has my cell phone. He doesn't like what we're doing. He's going to call us, say, get off the field. But right. I call him prior, say, I'm coming on here with this many people. Can I drive in your field? And if he says, no, we don't drive on, we carry it on like we did. I mean, we carried them in 150 yards. Right, it, which doesn't take a couple more you know, minutes, so. Hey, so you know what? We got our limit. You know, we still can make it to church, but I think we still have enough time, Steve. You got anything cooking at your house? Oh God, yeah, I got Well, it. let's pick I, these. I got some recipe. I got some stuff at home, but Let's it's like pick not, up these decoys yeah. and let's get, <laughs> let's get over there. <laughs> All 
All right, Larry. Welcome back Holy to the hunt, my friend. Man. Here's Cody. A, <laughs> here's you better got. get in here, Cody. Here's what we got. Got some nice hoagies. Oh, Gre I love hoagies. A little egg in there? Yeah, Greeby Acre. Eggs, just scrambled eggs, caramelized onion. Now this is on the recipe, like a Larry Smith Outdoors, I have breakfast sausage. It's our recipe, this is venison, yep. but in here I put a little chorizo, the Mexican. Oh, uh, I love chorizo. So I got chorizo, a little wedge, Yep. squeeze together. On the bottom is a little of that orange uh, queso cheese yep. that you buy in the cans. I just happened one made for myself ready. Oh, is that good, Shane? Shotgun safe, you definitely got it dialed in. You know what? We got about 15 minutes before we gotta leave and get to church, so. <laughs> Life is good, that's all I gotta say. What's this green thing? Hey. <laughs> no more sun drop. I hear you. We're done. No more sun drop. We're getting a divorce. <laughs> Probably be an ugly one. <laughs> It'll be very ugly. I might be a little crabby going down the road, folks, but we're done with sun drop. You got any more for? On the, way to, on the way to church? Yeah, but I got something on the stove for Dan. I know what he likes, so. Okay. He likes the white special marina um, marinara sauce. Follow me, Daniel. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Coming over. What I have here is another hoagie bun. What? A little bit of um, mozzarella on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Take my venison meatballs. Put a little bit. Like a chainsaw eating their stuff flying everywhere. I gotta hurry up, we gotta get into the church. Here's Mary's. I can't mm. give the recipe for that, guys, but my meatballs are on the website. We just had out in the blind today the stuffed meatballs. Oh. With onions awesome. and bacon. I think it really made me shoot better. I know it did. I saw it. I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. I think that shooting with the uh, sporting clay that day helped you out, too. Mm -hmm. So, folks, this is another one here. This is, there's mozzarella on the bottom, mm. a little bit of onion mixed in. The wife's marinara sauce. For those people that aren't married to my wife, you gotta go to the store and buy your own marinara what? sauce. Dan, I'll take the camera and you can enjoy. Are we good? Yeah, you're on, caveman. All I right, Danny. Like All right, I gotta get my that. lunch on here. Huh? The caveman finally gets to eat some. Right. Come on, put your elbows out, Danny boy. Right. Oh, look at the <laughs> sauce coming out of that thing. Man, he came his peak. That's so good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's so good. He's going down for seconds. There won't be stopping, no stopping. I'll tell you that on the way to church. You guys are good hungry. hunting, great food. Doesn't life get any doesn't better. get any better. Nope, life is great. I see your face, Dan. Bring it in. Got <laughs> more? Yeah, messy face. You know I'm the editor. I might not have put this in. Subscribe now to never miss an issue of the Badger Sportsman magazine. This issue features Green Bay Packer Jeff Janis. Along with great celebrity profiles, you'll find everything you need to know to have fun and be successful outdoors in Wisconsin. For availability in your area and subscription information, check out badgersportsman.com today. With ice fishing just around the corner, it's time to gear up. Check out the new Pro Skimmer by Deep Freeze. Offered in 6-inch, 8-inch, and 10-inch models. The fastest ice skimmer on the market. And once you're ready for those tip-ups, don't forget about Blue Tips. The first tip-up alert system sent straight to your smartphone. Free app available on Android and iOS. Check out these and other products at deepfreezefishing.com or any of your favorite retailers.
you know what? Yesterday we had such a great shoot on the goose hunting, and today we're going to finish up our show by doing some walleye and white bass fishing. The white bass have been coming uh, up the rivers because of the amount of current we've had, so it should be an interesting morning. We're going to start here in Winnicani and see what happens. So stay tuned. Let's see what happens at part number two on Larry Smith Outdoors. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm pulling upstream most of the time and I'm going, up, oh, there we go, I'm going just about a mile an hour and I'm tacking, you know, I'm going up the river and I'm tacking back and forth like this most of the time, back and forth across the river. And it seems to work out a lot better and I'm just pumping that fly, letting it go back and almost every time that sinker is hitting the bottom right there, I'm not dragging the sinker on the bottom, but it's hitting the bottom. Dale, you got one there too, huh? And Bill, everybody's loaded up again. Yeah? Not that bad, huh? Oh, you did get two, I was just kidding. Now you can, all you gotta do is just lift right up. Let's see if you can get three next time. Oh, he did get three! <laughs> I was just kidding. Grab the line, Bill. Grab the line. Whew, that pepper's a little hot, Danny. Yeah, it's, it's biting now. Yeah, the reaper pepper. I didn't think the first piece, I was like, ah, oh, this is nothing. But my nose is running. Boy, I don't know what I got here. If this is a couple white bass. No, look, what is that back there? Oh my, oh, see what I'm saying there. about flies? Look at the size of that pipe that just hit that fly. At first. Who oh, lift up? Nice, go get him, get him in there. Nice pipe. Oh, oh. Good job, Dale, thanks. <laughs> Holy man. That is absolutely a beautiful fish. That is a nice fish. I know, itty-bitty flies. Itty-bitty flies, yep. I've caught sturgeon on these flies. I've caught pike before. You know, catfish, there's nothing that doesn't hit them flies. That's a beautiful fish right there. Look at the girth on that thing, too. Nice fish. There he goes. All right. You want some more reaper pepper? You keep that reaper pepper. <laughs> Dale, Bill, thanks for helping us finish out our show here. Let's take Danny back up to shore here, and we're going to head up into the wolf and do some jigging, vertical jigging for some walleyes. And I'll tell you, you know what? Like I always say, what a great day to be alive. Shotgun! Yeah, hold on. I'm filming a show. I'll be right here. Hey, I'm sure that nobody will mind, but you know what? Secret recipe. I think we'll analyze it. 